<risa> el grado de incertidumbre es mayor, no es menor. Y esto a veces cuesta de aceptar y sin embargo la respuesta o la justificación es muy sencilla. O sea, la ciencia distingue entre verdades cognitivas y, y verdades culturales. Las verdades cognitivas son aquellas que por encima de todo son el fruto del, de haber profundizado en el conocimiento, un conocimiento. Y en cambio cognitivas es el resultado de haber profundizado en toda la cultura que embarga un solo fenómeno y por lo tanto la, las verdades llamadas culturales tienen una fecha de vencimiento muchísimo más temprana que las demás. Me ha interesado mucho lo que usted le comentaba sobre los dogmas. Esta es una, una, una sociedad muy dogmatizada. Creo. Sí. Bueno, es una sociedad que para empezar no tuvo su propia revolución científica, al contrario de otros países europeos como Gran Bretaña o Francia y, o Alemania. Esto ha tenido su influencia en el sentido de que la vida es una cosa muy complicada, como dice un biólogo amigo mío, uh, que lleva mucho tiempo. Sí, esto, que, que lleva mucho tiempo. Ya no sé lo que te, de, que, a qué te contestaba. Eso. Exacto. Y, y reconstruir una cultura donde no la había antes es algo que no se puede improvisar, que cuesta centenares de años y a veces miles de años. A mí me gustaría hablar mucho de ciencia con usted, por, pero no tenemos tiempo. Pero eh, usted que es un científico muy importante, ¿cuánto importante es la ciencia para el desarrollo de una sociedad? Vamos a ver, hay un error que es preciso corregir de inmediato en este país y es una separación ficticia entre ciencia y el resto de la cultura. Esto es una tontería como una casa del, que, que ha sido impulsada a veces por los propios científicos que han considerado que lo adecuado era profundizar en su conocimiento en lugar de ampliarlo. ¿no? O sea que yo creo que esto requiere, uh, para que España deje de ser un país dogmático científicamente, requiere lo que llamamos la multidisciplinariedad. Es decir, darse cuenta que la ciencia es no solo la biología o la física o las matemáticas, sino que abarca toda la cultura. Y es, hay un alto dirigente de IBM que me decía una vez, I am a biologist, uh, a computational biologist. Yo soy un biólogo computacional. Es decir, cuando le pregunté qué quería decir con eso, me dijo, pues sencillamente, que utilizo la computadora tanto como la biología. An expiration date. Yeah, expiration date. Scientific truth. Has, has it an expiration date? Um, Not just a date, but I think actually uh, any truth can expire if somebody finds another truth that's better. Is there any truth in science, or is it always paradigms? Or I think it all depends what you mean by truth. Um, 
the old truths are okay within their limits, but you can actually find more limits which will show that the old truths don't quite fit and new truths are better. Um, we're talking about the uh, philosophy of science now, not just science itself, but I mean, if you're really getting deep and meaningful, <laughs> it's, it's difficult because people can find things that don't quite fit in with previous held theories. Um, they don't exactly prove the old theories are wrong, but you can get new theories which fit the findings better. Well, taking, uh, there's nothing wrong with taking science anywhere, but um, a lot of people don't understand scientists. Um, scientists don't usually talk about absolute truth. Mm. There, there is no absolute truth. So you ask me what truth is, I don't necessarily know. But, but theories are there which cover the well-known facts. But if you get more facts, those theories that they had, they deal more in theories than in truths. I don't think a good scientist really knows what truth is. But he'll tell you the theories that fit the facts that we know. And then if you find more facts that don't fit in those theories, well then you have to change the theories to fit the more facts. That's, and science gradually evolves like that. And by and large the old science or held th scientific theories, the old scientific theories still more or less fit in, but you have to sort of change them perhaps in, with details of things that didn't fit in before. But, and a lot of people in the general public don't understand this, and they think the scientists don't know what they're talking about because they like to argue about things. The scientists know what they're doing when they argue about things, and they're quite happy to argue about so-called truths and theories and things. And if someone outside in the general public who's not a scientist doesn't understand what they're doing, hears them all arguing, they think, oh, they're, none of, they're all, they all think different things and they don't know what they're talking about. But it's not true, you know? They, do know. they do know what they're talking about, but they're using almost a different language because they don't mind discussing things. But, um, <laughs> Causa by this university, the, cer what? the ceremony yesterday. Oh, yesterday. Dr. what have you felt about it? Well, I think it was a wonderful ceremony and it's a great honour for me. It's a beautiful university you've got here. Do I think it is important to to do these uh, kind of things, uh, taking the science to young people, to students? Taking them to young people? Yeah. I think so, yes. <laughs> Spread it as much as possible. <laughs> yes. Try and get people to understand what people are what scientists are talking about. Because <laughs> most people, I don't think they do understand what scientists are talk talking about. A good scientist isn't trying to tell you what's the absolute truth, because he's quite happy to admit that he doesn't know the absolute truth. Truth is a philosophical thing. Theories and facts and, and sort of known measurements, they're the scientific things. But the absolute truth is something that philosophers can talk about. <laughs> well, I think actually for really good science to develop, you need some people with... with um, good and open minds who are prepared to look at things and yeah. develop things in their own heads. Um, at a lesser level you need people working, doing investigations and so on, and that costs money. But I don't think that's the most important thing. The most important thing is to have somebody, somebody who's got a brain that thinks 